Hi there, I'm back again. This time we're going to make produce bags. The reason being we do not want to use plastic. And they are so handy to take to the grocery store and you can use them for anything anyway. The same size bag is what I use for my shoe bags and I make it out of 100% cotton fabric. So I've done so many out of different fabrics to show you today and all different sizes because you need all different sizes. So this one was made out of some curtaining fabric. Okay, and it's just a curtaining fabric and I put an applique on it and the same method that I'm doing around the top of them all, which I'm going to show you, a cord and a toggle. So they're very, very handy. The little toggle just pulls them in and um, they're great. So that one's out of a excess fabric for curtains. This one is 100% cotton mesh, so I can see through it and the same deal on that one. This product is from um, Mitre 10 and it's a frost cloth that you can put over your berries or your fruit so the birds can't get it and it will last forever but it is not um, organic, it is um, polyester but it's still really good and it's good to use your scraps of fabrics up anyway that you've got at home and this is a wonderful lightweight um, cotton with a tiny bit of polyester mesh in black and we also have it in white, which is really cute. And then I have some little ones also. So sometimes you just want to get some little garlics and things like that, or a couple of onions. It's really good to make small ones. So make any size and every size. Give them to your friends and family because they are going to thank you because they'll utilize them. Okay? So I'm going to use um, a bit of cotton mesh today because we have got this gorgeous new fabric in. And it's perfect because it's got vegetables all over it. So what you want, if, if you want an applique, is a square of fabric for an applique. That's a 5 by 5 inch square. And I want to put a casing along the top. So you cut the casing the size your bag is going to be. Okay? And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn under my two ends by about 6 mils and I'm going to press under one side. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to turn under both ends. And um, you can make this any width you like, depending on the look you want. I normally use two and a half centimetre, but I've gone wider to three, uh, two and a half inch. I've gone wider to three centimetres to see more of the fabric. And I'm just going to turn under my quarter inch on one side. So it's pretty much clean finishing one side of your fabric so that you, when you go to top stitch it's all done. Okay? So you will look like this for your fabric. There's a start. So the first thing I'm going to do is you can decide if you have got one piece instead of two pieces and you're going to have a back seam you can centre this on the front of your fabric. I might even put it on an angle. Why not? And um, just stitch it on. And the stitch I used for this, don't put it too low, the stitch I used for this was just the little blanket stitch. So I have got white thread on. I will change it to black. Or you can have white thread on. Well, I could leave white thread on, I suppose, for a feature. But if I was at home, I'd put black on. So I'm going to put white on so you can see my stitches. So I'm just going to go to my um, blanket stitch. And my blanket stitch on my machine is in my patchwork folder. So I'm just going to push the blanket stitch. And the blanket stitch is 2.3 wide by 2.6 high. That is not wide enough. I want it to be a feature. So I'm going to make it wider. I'm going to take it out to 3.5 by 2.85. So all I've done is widen it and lengthen it. So what I want to do is just blanket stitch this on. Now the blanket stitch is going to go over my raw edge and onto my fabric. So I'm just going to see if I like the stitch the right width. Yes, that's going to be good. So now I'm just going to run this down the raw edge of my fabric going to stop on the corners with my needle down to the right
Oh, I've got a bit of fabric there I haven't cut correctly. One moment while I just regroup because there's a little tiny piece that's cut here so I'm going to have to go all the way along. I can't have checked that when I've finished. Just going to make sure I cut it nice and evenly because the vegetables might know if I don't. Oh, I'm not very good at going backwards. I'll just lift it up. So isn't it good having the needle down? Because I can spin this around. There we go. Spin that around. That could have caused a disaster with my vegetables. I'm going to cut that thread while I'm here. And the underneath thread's gone because it was only small. Right, carry on. Actually, the white's quite nice on it. I quite like it now. So I'm going to carry on down here. One more stitch, there we are, and turn. Okay, that's just a bit of fabric. You don't need to do this, I just think it looks cute. And you know what, it doesn't really add on any weight. These are so light. I'll tell you what to do, when you go to the grocery store, measure your grocery store in the weight, and then put them in the bag in the weight, you won't be paying a cent more. They're so light. So people are stressing about, oh, my bag's going to be heavy. They're not heavy. They're so light. So do the exercise yourself or else put them in after you've weighed them at the checkout. But honestly, they are so much easier having them in bags. And the beauty about these organic ones is they can go in the fridge and the vegetables can stay in the fridge. So these can go straight in the fridge and your vegetables can stay in them. You do not need to take them out because they are all organic, 100% cotton. So that's quite handy as well. You know, if you want to um, give a gift, um, it's a very useful gift to give somebody. So at the end here I can just backstitch or I can lock it off, whatever you want to do, your choice. So there is my bag there, I'm using this um, edge as my hem mainly because it's completely sealed off anyway, I don't need to do any more work to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, my top on, I nearly didn't put my top on which is here. Now you need to decide at this stage if you want to top stitch it over onto the right side or top stitch it over to the wrong side. It makes no difference because I'm going to blanket stitch it. So I'm just going to leave it right side and then it's going on to the wrong side. It honestly makes no difference. And the only thing I would do is put one pin in here to hold it and one pin in here. Now you'll notice that I've got a seam allowance at both ends. See, you can see it. A seam allowance at both ends. Okay, and then it's nice and even. So now I'm going to put my machine back on straight sewing and I'm just going to sew this on. So stitch number one and it's on center needle position and it's 2.5 length which is my standard and I'm going to leave it on that. These are very, very quick to make. They are a wonderful, wonderful gift. And if you wanted to get really fancy dancy, you could make a, um, a fabric cord to go through it instead of using a purchase cord. So you can make a little roulette and that could be your ties. pin out, try not to sew over pins, your mechanic will be so much happier. Now you're going to put, oh look I've done it again, I do this, this is what I do regularly, I make mistakes and I'm very very good at making them on camera, I'm brilliant. So what I've done here, I did this in class twice, I've sewn that on because I went, oh there, that's a quick, really quick easy way to do, but now my drawstring will be at the back of my bag. Where's one I've done wrong? This one. So my drawstring's at the back of my bag. It really doesn't matter, but I quite like my drawstring at the side of my bag. 
in which case this goes on after you've sewn your side seam. Yeah, well, you can't be clever all of the time. Really makes no difference, but now my drawstring will be at the back of my bag like this one that I did wrong. So next time, stitch this on after you've stitched your side seams and put your opening at one side, this being the opening, okay? We're not going to worry about it today because you're that clever, you'll work it out. So now we're going to put right sides to right side every time. Oh well, you know, it just makes you not make mistakes. Now, I do not use a straight stitch. I use a triple straight stitch and I make sure these are out of the road. So I just put my seam together here and I put my machine on triple straight stitch because I want this very strong. I might fill it up with apples and it needs to be strong. So the triple straight stitch is going to go forwards and backwards. If I go slow, it goes two steps forward and two steps back. Okay? And it is very, very strong. When I get to the bottom here, I stop the same distance away, about a centimetre or 1.5, and I do not sew across there. I nearly did. Do not sew across the bottom. You need to open it up and sew across this way. So before I do that, I would like to clean finish these raw edges and to do that I'm going to use not the single overlock this time I'm going to use the double overlock. See look I stopped myself from making a very quick mistake so this time it's the double overlock. Now what the double overlock does is straight stitches on this side, straight stitches on this side and it zigzags in the middle. So it's called a double overlock so it's stronger Oop, and I'm too close to the edge. So we're just going to move in a little bit. There we go. That's better. So it's going to be a very strong seam. So you know your vegetables, your apples, whatever you put in there are not going to fall out. So some of my ladies made um, nice long skinny ones for their celery and they store them in the fridge and they say the celery lasts longer and I would believe that because if you keep celery wrapped up it will last longer so there's a little tip for you now I'm going to put it back to straight sewing and I'm going to remember to open up my seam now here's your halfway mark to here it's just like doing everything that we've done already you put a mark in the halfway mark you take that halfway mark to your seam here and you stitch across the bottom. So remember, triple straight stitch. Number Stitch number six on this machine. Um, it will be very similar on most machines. It will be in the beginning ten stitches. So just look for your double overlap. I'm just pushing the seam to one side. Even though this hem is completely sealed, I'm still going to double overlock it together because we're making our bag strong. Okay, as well as clean finishing it, it's making it really strong. Just straighten that up. When you start too close to the edge, it will not move. So just come in a little bit because it's very soft fabric. I should have got a little fabric square at the back like I've shown you before. I'll hold my threads until it's started to feed. There we go. Alright, so just run along. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, it is a grocery bag for your vegetables. But you will just use these so much. 
and they look nice when you go to the grocery store. People will ask you where you bought it from. You can say you made it. Looking they're great. Okay, I'm just going to trim that. Trim there. Now, turn your bag to the right side. Cute, cute bag. Turn your bag to the right side. And then you are going to put your seam up into your um, casing and you're going to roll this over the casing. So what I do, I'll just show you, I'll put it back in the wrong way. What I do is with my iron, if I'm doing a cotton one, if I'm not, I just pin it. If I'm doing a cotton one, I just push that up to there and give it a quick little press up and then I know my seam is going to stay up there and I'm just going to clip my threads like that. Cool. And then this is already pressed so this is going to come over here like this. Now I actually sew, believe it or not, from the right side. So I turn it over, and you can have it the other way, but I, I like doing it like this because this side is my stitch side, this side is my press side, and I just pop a pin in there. And I'll just show you. So here's my little crease side, and it's going over top of that. So you can feel it and see it exactly and it will just fold into place. It's so simple. So pop a pin in there. And this is cute fabric. It's got mushroom and beets and asparagus words all over it. It's very cute. Very cute. Okay, let's do that all the way along. I'll just come to this end so you can see. And seam up. And on to there. And we're going to use the blanket stitch. So I'll leave the white thread on because it really shows up. Oh, my kingdom for a pin. One moment, please. Pins are very elusive in a, in a sewing shop. There we go, I've got one. Excellent. Right, so I'm going to put it back onto blanket stitch. Now, blanket stitch remembers in with your quilting stitches. Now, this time, because I've put it on the blanket stitch, the blanket stitch is going to sew to the left and I want it to sew to the right. So I'm going to push a button which is a mirror image button and it's going to completely flip it over. Okay, so that's what I've just pushed, a mirror image button. I'm just going to steal a pin from the end so that I can show you. You really don't need to worry too much because it's just going to stay where you want it. When you put two pins in, if you go like that, it will go exactly where you need it to go. It's crazy, but it works. So, I'm, <coughs> I've turned my blanket, I've flipped my blanket stitch over, and I'm going to put my needle down on the left hand side, and then I'm going to rearrange and make sure everything is sitting beautifully flat. There, and now I can start stitching. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going. On the very left so that it's going off the black so once I get started so it's actually going onto my bag and it's just going off the black then you'll be able to see and the underneath one is just a little bit lower there we go. and once you get going away you go So just pull it, it will just sit where it needs to go. It's very, very clever. So you don't need a million pins because you've already pressed it. If you've pressed something, I'll just open that up so you can see it. If you've pressed something, it will sit flat. And if you've cut it on the right grain, it will sit flat. 
think the blanket stitch is a great stitch because it's lovely and strong um, and it gives a feature instead of just edge stitching it with a straight stitch or a zigzag I think use something that's a little bit nicer there you go take the pins out pins pins can be a nuisance because you have to stop there you go Hopefully you can see that nice and clearly there. Needle stop down is the best function ever been put on these machines. It's fantastic. So you want to secure it at the end. Should have left my pin in there, but that's all right. Just make sure. Here we go. We're good. And then I actually, I'll show you what happens at the end here. When I get to this end part, because it's going to have the drawstring, I like to go across because there's a little gap there, and then I like to reverse to make that nice and strong and lock it off. Okay. Now all that's required is for you to put the drawstring in. So turn your bag into the right side, like that, and your drawstring only needs to be a little bit wider than the width of your bag and double the width, double the length. So what I do is I use um, a little bit of sellotape and I put it on the end of the cord like this, so it's got a little bit of sellotape on there. And then I use my pincer bodkin. Now a pincer bodkin is a bodkin that opens up and then you pull it and it pinces it down. So I'm going to pop it on the end of my cord. I don't know why I have such a skinny cord. I don't normally use a skinny cord. And I put my pincer bodkin like that so it can't fall out. Then I just go from one side and just thread it round to the other. Very easy. Don't pull it so that the other end comes through until you've got your bodkin on. Done that before today. And then undo your pincer bodkin and it will open up. The reason why I put sellotape on the ends, because I'm going to use um, a... Isn't that funny? How can I forget the name of it? This thing here. And it's got two holes in it. How funny. A toggle. I've remembered. It's got two holes in it, so one is going to go through the top hole and one is going through the bottom hole and it makes it easy if you've got sellotape on so you can thread them through. It's really hard without it. Then what I do is I pull them together so that they're even and then you just pull this up and you have got your wonderful bag. I tie these in a knot And then I burn those off so that they're all sealed and there you have your gorgeous little bag. So whether you've done it right and you've put your toggle on the back or you've are uh, wrong, you've got the toggle on the back or on the side, they make for a cute little bag. So there's my little handy two little things to make this time. And I think, you know, making things that you're going to use in your everyday life is really, really important. And also giving them as a gift to people is a great thing to do because we all want to get rid of our plastic and it's our little way of, you know, doing something towards helping. Um, and if you've got old bits of fabric that you can use up, then use them up. But this here, the size you've got on your notes, is also a very good size for a shoe bag that we take whenever we go travelling to put your shoes in. They're brilliant. So there you go. There is your July Banana Club. I think you are going to make some of these, I really do. I'm sure you're going to make some tissue box covers and some covers for wet wipes as gifts as well. And you should get started because guess what, Christmas is nearly here. Have a good month.